family is the ultimate test. You know, it's easy to be shiny and awesome and 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 feel like you you've made so much progress in your personal development journey when you're in your little controlled bubble and box. It's a whole nother ball game when you go back home and they are still holding you as little so and so. Blessings and blessings, tribe. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, I love you. Uh, I hope that all is well with you, and I know that we are stepping into holiday season, and holiday season brings quite a bit up for quite a few people. So I wanted to hop in here and have a conversation with you about how to handle some of that anxiety and how to navigate and why to navigate your internal conversations about how things should be in your family. So, um, let's start with this. Everybody, and I'm sure you guys can see Lexi back there. Um, say hi, baby. There she is. Um, everybody is, has a dysfunctional family. Some of us have innies, like you, you guys know belly buttons. So some of our belly buttons are inward and some of them are outies. So some of us have innies and some of us have outies. The, those of us who have um, outies, it's very clear, it's easy to see all the places in which your family is dysfunctional and uh, you know, why you should avoid them and why it's toxic and I feel all this stuff around holidays and all of that stuff. Like, I get it. Um, and for those of you who have innies, meaning your, your family, it's a little more subtle. It's that, it's, like, it's, like, it's that conversation around why you're still single. It's that, it's that sort of subtle jabs at, you know, why your mate is in there watching football or that kind of stuff. It's a little more subtle. It's in the tonality and the, the, the energetics of how they, they speak to you and how you speak to them. And whether you have an any or an Audi family, I want to say this. Um, our families are our families. Whether they're rude, loud, super dysfunctional, crazy, all of that, all of that is what has helped you and molded you into the beautiful human that you are. And so, uh, you know, it's very easy to say my, my family is terrible. My family is this, my family is that, and that's why I stay away from them all year. For me, family is the ultimate test. You know, it's easy to be shiny and awesome and, and, and feel like you're, you've made so much progress in your personal development journey when you're in your little controlled bubble and box. It's a whole nother ball game when you go back home and they are still holding you as little so-and-so or, um, <laughs> you know, there's the subtleties of you being the black sheep in the family or you being the, you know, the golden child and their, you know, the, the pressures of not allowing them or to see the ways in which you aren't living up to that label. Is this resonating? Do you guys get what I'm saying here? All of this is a part of why it's deeply necessary that each and every one of us if we have a family to go back to, that we go back to them and we love on them and we love on ourselves. And I wanna talk about this idea, right? So a lot of clients have come and they, they, they have this internal conversation about either or. It's either I, you know, I go see my family or I don't. It's either I, you know, um, curse my dad out and I hate this whole thing or I love it and I swallow my own conversations and pride and all of that stuff. 
And I'm, I just want to bring into the, in, into the space and into your awareness that it doesn't have to be either or. You, you can have both. It's a both and conversation. So you can have boundaries and, and enjoy your time. One of the things that I do in my family, and I'm sure they do this with me, I'm, I'm almost certain they do because I've been such an asshole for so many years Especially when I first started waking up, I'd come back and I'd try to get everybody to juice and I'd be judging how they were feeding their kids and I'd be judging, you know, what we were eating and what they were watching on the TV and all of that stuff. And, you know, the, the quickest way to screw your life up is to take everything personal. The quickest way to disconnect from your family is to take it all personal. So for me, I do my best to find this whole thing funny. I find it funny. I, I allow myself, and I just want to give you guys a little view of our... Gold Coast little situation here. The whole front end of the house opens up so you can keep pushing that all the way open. So every morning I walk out here and it's just pure gorgeousness. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying and I'm reminding you once again that it's not an either or conversation because the moment we take it off the table of this being some personal thing, right? Like, I'm the youngest in my family, so of course, I'm little Preston, and I'm little, 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 and they have all these memories about me and who I wasn't, and now it can be very difficult to hold me, or see me, or be with me in a new context when man is in the room. That can be very difficult, and so I can either take that personal and say, oh, they're still trying to demean me and keep me small, or I can understand that everybody's in a process. We're all learning something new all learning something new, including the newness of who we are in this now moment. And so we can mm, fight against that, or we can, which would be resistance, or we can receive it and play with it and love on it and squeeze it and, and, and be present to it, not in a way in which uh, takes away from your, your personal truth. So for instance, if your uncle or your dad says that sexist joke all the time, and, and every time they do it, you shut down and you leave out of the house, or you, you, you feel defeated or deflated, this time, maybe you call your dad or your uncle out on that and still choose love, still choose joy, still choose peace and harmony, still choose to understand that that is a form of love as well. Right, because we're always teaching people how to be with us. So if you uh, continuously allow them or someone you know, to, to speak into your life, for instance, some of you may go home and you dread the question, you know, when are you gonna have a girlfriend? Or when are you gonna have a boyfriend? Or when are you gonna bring a man home? Or, or when are you gonna have babies? And are you gonna freeze your eggs? You're getting a little old. If all of these type of conversations come into the space and you dread these conversations and you, you run away from them, and you disconnect, you're doing yourself and them a disservice by not facing off with it. Being okay with things not being okay for a moment, possibly, while also simultaneously holding that it's possible that it doesn't have to be either or. Is this all making sense? Is this making sense? I hope it is, guys. Um, I, I know it's a bit complicated, but there's, it, I just, the, the overall message I wanted to get home and nail home here is that you don't have to choose either leaving when you go if, if something triggers you or compromising your truth. The two can live together. That's the place to lean into. That's the place to, to sort of swim in. And it is uh, a really beautiful thing. You know, at the end of the day, our families are the ones that will be there if we got into a car crash or got some, you know, crazy disease or something of that nature. Like, they are the ones that would be there. And so as much as we like to um, avoid or judge them, the love is still there, right? Whether they are your chosen family or your blood family, the love is still there. And, you know, for me, you know, for instance, my sister, and she may watch this, I know my dad will probably watch this, and I love you, daddy. Um, my sister, you know, she's the only person in the world who knows what it's like to have our mom and dad and to be raised where we were raised and to have all of the experiences that we had. And because of that, I have a deep love for her. And I know that I have 
been not the greatest brother in so many ways. I've held her in her history. I've gone in thinking they're going to judge me. And while they, I'm thinking they're going to judge me, I'm judging them. That's not fair. My family is so freaking loving. I'm so weird and crazy. And they just love on me. And they, 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 they never turn their backs on me. Like, it's, it's a big deal. And so, from my heart to yours, like, don't, please don't bite the bait or believe the lie that you can't create a win-win in your family situation. And I want to leave you with this. Very rarely do we embrace, make eye contact, and really drop in with our family. So if you have an opportunity to be with your grandmother, your cousin, your mom, your dad, whoever, who you haven't seen in a while, stop and be with them. Truly look at them, breathe them in. If you're feeling froggy, give them a hug and actually hold on to them, you know? Family is a big deal. Peace. Love you guys. If this resonated, A, tag a family member, B, share it. Blessings and blessings from Gold Coast, Australia. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, y'all. Peace.